Um, I guess we could probably start at the very beginning. And, you know, can you remember what it was that inspired you to become a filmmaker? Because this is not the easiest of career paths. Oh, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a nightmare on Elm Street. The first movie I saw it when I was uh, eight years old. So you guys can do the math as to when I was born. Um, when I was uh, eight years old, I saw it in the theater and it didn't. I was already I'd already seen horror movies by then. Like it wasn't a weird thing, you know, to me because my parents kind of didn't really monitor what I watched, but it never really messed me up. It was more like I was into the make believe part of it. And when I saw Nightmare specifically, the mo the whole thing just reeled me in. Those, I mean, that's still to this day my favorite movie. But the moment where Glenn gets sucked into the bed and then, you know, the blood fountain, I was like, oh, my God, like, I, OK, whatever magic trick that is, I want to make that happen, you know, so. That's pretty much where it started. So then through school and everything, again, like I'm, I'm 44, 45. So it was harder to find like video cameras and stuff, but I always had a friend that had one. And so whenever we do, it's like some sort of school project that I always try to talk the teacher into instead of letting me write a paper, like letting me do a video. So I kind of would do that growing up. And then when I, when I went to college, I actually started as an aerospace engineering major and a minor in film. And then... I just realized when I was going to the film classes, I was just like, this is what I'm much more into, you know, like, why don't I just concentrate on this? So I flipped it and that's kind of where it all began. It's really bizarre that you say that because my husband is a, is a physicist with a, oh yeah. <laughs> aero, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, expertise in, in, uh, in aerospace and then I'm into film. So it's like, oh so yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> bridging the gap. The two sides of a brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for those that haven't uh, read up on Mystery Spot yet, without giving too much away, uh, sure. what's what's the film about? You know, in a in a nutshell. Uh, so I would uh, I would say that it's about a uh, mysterious hotel out in the middle of nowhere, Texas, that used to be right directly adjacent to a mystery spot. And for those that aren't familiar with things like that, it's they're like roadside attractions that generally traffic in like optical illusions. Usually, they're built into the side of a hill or something to make you. And they, they build things in a way to trick your brain to make you think that gravity doesn't work and water flows uphill and things like that. Um, that in the movie, that attraction is no longer operational, but there's still something, you know, kind of going on with the area. And for whatever reason, it seems to attract these lost, unmoored people. And um, we follow uh, several of them through the film and things do not, you know, things do not go as planned. <laughs> No. I mean, where did the idea for this come from? Because it is a very, you know, it's a very interesting idea. It's a very unique idea. Um, I've always, so with that part of it, I've always been fascinated with those places. Uh, driving, Texas is huge. So, and I've driven through most of it. And like, there are so many of those weird little roadside attraction places here. Um, and that's always been a thing where I'm like, oh man, I bet there's, there's some sort of story in that, right? There's a place in San Antonio called Gravity Hill. That's not, it's not, they didn't build a building or anything, but it's like this optical illusion with railroad tracks where if you park your car on it, it seems like your car is being pushed uphill. And the story is that you're, there was a school bus of kids that died there. They got hit by a train and they push you, you know, but it's really just, it's uphill and you can't tell it's uphill, right? But it's a very famous, like I went to, I went to school in Austin and there were a bunch of people I went to school with in college with that were from San Antonio that would always talk about this place and they'd always go there and always do the thing where they put the baby powder on the car and you see handprints but no one thinks oh it's our handprints it's it must be the dead kids right so that I've always had a fascination with that kind of thing right that local lore stuff and then the rest is sort of like the emotional stuff and everything else that sort of uh we deal with in the movie it was written in a t at a time that things were like not not going that great our, my kid you know was maybe she was two years old I had just lost my job. We were really struggling. I had just tried to get a movie made that's completely fell apart. And so mystery spot, I kind of, what I tell everybody, and this is not far from the truth. I sat down one weekend and in just like this therapeutic, like rage and grief, like just, you know, uh, I vomited everything out, you know, in the first draft. And I didn't even really realize, I was, I didn't even think, oh, think, well, you know, should this be, is this even going to take the shape of something we can even shoot? But I went back and read it and I was like, oh, oh, holy shit, man, I really like the way this turned out. And so I went back and kind of did a few more passes, obviously, but but it really did come out of that that part of my life where I was just 
really questioning everything. I mean, you know, every, you know, everything was up in the air. We didn't know how we we're going to make it. I mean, you, you know, you know, it's like ha having a kid, you are just like, how do I figure, how do I figure the next day out, you know? And, and then every the bottom is just falling out of everything. And then at the same time, I'm trying to work on movies, which means I'm traveling and gone for six weeks at a time. So I can't see my kid. So that, you know, that's not the best place to be, you know what I mean? So all that I kind of wrapped into the script and uh, that's what came out the other side. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're a writer and a director, you know, I'm always quite interested because you know, there's quite a few of you out there these days, you know, with your process, is it the idea that comes first? You know, is it an image or is it the words? For me, it's, uh, let me think. Yeah, for me, it's um, always actually, always been the words. Yeah, I, yeah. And I usually, sometimes I don't even, it's, ha it's pretty much happened to where I've directed everything that I've written, but I don't necessarily do that with that in mind, like intending to do it myself. I just kind of, honestly, especially with the mystery spot thing, um, it usually is a, it's almost like a diary, like, like, like I have to get it out. And it just, because I'm, I am into writing screenplays, that's the form it takes, but it's almost like, I'm not even thinking about the final product. You know, I'm just trying to get it out of me, like have that catharsis. Uh, and it's it, most especially with this one, but uh, yeah, I usually it's the words first and then things start coming together uh, after I've gone through it maybe once or twice, you know, I'll, I'll have to my brain, I could feel the switch flip in my brain, and I start thinking about it visually. I mean, when you, you know, when you did get to that stage, you know, were there any, any films or anything that you, you look to for, for inspiration for, you know, feel in terms of like style and tone? Uh, definitely from, so, uh, and there are a couple that I, d I immediately thought of, and then there are a couple that I realized crept in and I didn't even realize it, but, uh, for me, um, Paris, Texas was one that I, which is not, you know, obviously a weird thing to say for a, you know, a suspenseful, like a horror movie or whatever, but I really have always really loved that movie and it was shot very near where we live. And a lot of my friends were in Paris, Texas. I, you know, I just like a lot about that film. I saw it when I was very young and it made a really huge impression on me more so than you would think a film like that. That's like real sort of languidly paced, you know what I mean? That you, but you know, I was probably like nine or 10. I was like, man, that is really good. And you know, not, but I wouldn't watch other movies like that. It's for whatever reason, the where I caught it, maybe it's cause I recognize the places or whatever, mm -hmm. but um, that definitely informed my first few conversations with the director of photography for sure. Uh, and then uh, in the mood for love came up a lot. Uh, just because I had been, I've been on a long car wide trip, like around that time, you know, and just uh, uh, pace and shot selection and things like that. Uh, I, I think I, I thought about that film a lot. Uh, as far as the creepier stuff, the changeling, I thought of quite often when doing it. Uh, that's one of my favorite ghost movies. And um, uh, then one that I realized that I didn't even because I, I watched it again recently and I was like, oh my God, this is another one that I saw when I was young and you would not think that this would have stuck with me at that age, but you know, the Tarkovsky Solaris, like, yeah. yeah. Cause I, and I, I don't even know how I saw that movie when I was a kid because you know, you'd think it'd be kind of hard to find at that time, but clearly it made a pre impression on me and I didn't real and I had seen it a bunch, you know, and saw it, watched a bunch of film school, but it, it didn't really cross my mind until I started really getting the cut of this together and just thinking about how I approach certain things, uh, and 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 I think I just recently got the Blu-ray, and I, and when I watched it, I was like, "Holy shit, <laughs> that one was in there rattling around too." I didn't even remember, didn't even realize it, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, those are the. Big I mean, it is always strange. You know, there is all those things that you know, sort of, you know, just niggling away, you know, subconsciously that do you know affect yeah the affect. things that affect you and you're like oh yeah that clearly has been setting in there for a while I didn't realize it and then of course like everything I mean Nightmare on Elm Street is always I mean Lisa's obviously in the movie that's why you know I'm a huge fan of but uh you know that's always there but it's not necessarily it's more like it's more like uh it's it's an influence but it's not something that I'm trying to ape or whatever especially with this movie you know but I'm just there, there, there are always those instances where it's like something will come up on set and it's a problem we have to solve. And I'm like, hmm, what would rest, what would 1984 Wes Craven do? You know, like it's that kind of thing. Like how would they solve this problem? So. 
I mean, the film, you know, it's got Graham Skipper in, and you know, Graham is a is a firm favourite with the uh, Breakfast Crowd. Yep. Um, but here, he he sort of has something to do that is a bit different to what I guess the Breakfast Crowd are, are used to him seeing, you know, seeing uh-huh. him do. You know, he's a drug dealer, uh-huh. or you know, he's looking for his dad in a board game. You know, but this <laughs> is a, right, right. This is a sort of a much fleshier, fleshier role. You know, what was it about Graham that captured your attention and made you, you know, know that he could, you know, he could go to the places that you needed him to? Uh, to be honest, I mean, we've been friends for a, a while. Like so when I was working on films, uh, like just working as an assistant director or unit production manager or whatever uh, for those for those years, I, I worked with Graham a few times and I lived with him when I would go work out in L.A. And so we just became really good friends. And I could see, and every movie I worked on with him, including the one he di- wrote and directed, Sequence Break, I could see there was a different side of him, you know. And then he's got all the mo- all of his movies in his guest house, so I'm like, oh, I haven't seen that. Let me watch this, and it's a different Graham, you know. It's a different Graham. It's a different Graham. So, and and that was something that uh, I was like, well, well, we'd never seen him really do something like this. It would be cool. I know he can do it, you know. Clearly, he's very talented. Um, so, and it was our relationship, I guess, you know, drew me towards him and, uh, the way I met him or the way I met the producers of mystery spot was via working on sequence break with him. So he, he entered the conversation very early, you know, I was like, Oh, of course, you know, of course. Yeah. So he can do it. And, and he murdered, I mean, there were times that I, had to when I was editing both with Graham and Lisa but Graham I guess because that's more like directly stuff out of my head uh and the stuff he's dealing with like I would have to get up and leave the editing room and go do something fun just to not get all down in my feelings or whatever like it really was affecting me you know um so yeah he 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 killed it and uh I'm very very happy that that he did it because he it I did real as as I started to put it together I did really realize, oh, this is something we really haven't seen him do yet. And he's does such a good job at it. And yeah, opposite him, as you mentioned, you know, you've got Lisa Wilcox, you know, a, a you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, icon. You know, what was it like working with a, you know, a bona fide horror legend? Oh, it's, <laughs> it was, it was amazing. I mean, it's, um, it's weird because I still have to remind myself, because Lisa and I have been friends for a long time, longer, because we worked on a movie together. 12 years ago and that's where we sort of first met you know and and we've worked together a few times since so now it's more like she's a friend of like my kid calls her aunt lisa you know what i mean so it's like but then there are times where like she's been at our house and she'll sit down in a chair under the nightmare four poster and then i go oh yeah okay yeah she's you know it's like i remember or it'll be on tv or someone will mention it you know we actually i had a friend of mine from um I've known since elementary school, visit the set. He offered to cook for us from on mystery spot. And I, the reason I asked him if he wanted to do it, I remember us seeing nightmare four and him just like having the hugest crush on Lisa Wilcox, huge. And, you know, as did I, but I mean, I could, you know, it was just something special for him. And then there was a movie. I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's a, it's an after school special that we had to watch in school, like maybe a week or two after. And she was in it. And I just remember my friend going, oh, my God, Lisa Wilcox. So immediately I was like, hey, Mike, would you come cook, you know, for this on set? Uh, Lisa's going to be in this movie. And he got all flustered and weird about it. And, and he wouldn't even like he was afraid to like look her in the eye. <laughs> it was, and she and she wanted she just wanted, she, the barbecue was great. She wanted to thank him. But, but it was it was kind of cute. Um, but and, and th- that's a moment where I was like, oh, sometimes just because we've gotten so friendly with one another and we're just around each other so much. Uh, like every, t- even if I'm not working on anything with her, if I'm in LA or, you know, I'll hang out with her, uh, I forget. And then that stuff that brings me back to remind me, oh yeah, she's the dream master. She's the dream child's mother. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and on top of that, I mean, she, I have known since the first time we worked together, I've, I've known she can just bring it, you know, she's solid. She's so good the role of Rachel was written for her, like with her in mind, because there was another, the the movie that I mentioned that we never could get off the ground. She was supposed to be in. And when that fell through, I was like, 
I realized, okay, well, I need to write something specifically for her to play to her strength that she doesn't get to do often, you know, or people aren't really looking to do, you know, um, and, and so I wrote it with her in mind. And what's fun, like, there's a, the movie that we didn't get to do finds its way into mystery spot. You know, there's that scene where they're reading the script that's lines from that other movie. So I was like, I kind of got to hear her say it. <laughs> I worked it in there. But yeah, she, uh, it was, it was wonderful, especially like that scene in particular, you know, I watching it on set, I, again, I had to walk away. Cause I remember someone gave me like a, a, a subtle, like high five. They're like, Oh man, that's so good. And I was like, yeah, I, I it's, I got us, I, I got to leave. It's weird because it was one of those moments where I realized, Oh, I'm here. We're making this thing. That's super important to me and my experience, but also she's saying the words and it's, you know what I mean? All these things are kind of coming together, you know? So I had to like live in the moment and appreciate it for a minute <laughs> and then move on, you know? I mean, the film does have these wonderful intimate and calm performances, you know, with quite a few, you know, scenes, you know, long scenes with dialogue in, you know, mm -hmm. how did you, you know, go about creating that space that, you know, your actors could, you know, feel comfortable enough to, to go to those, you know, to give those performances? Yeah, it's a uh, good question. Um, even though we were, obviously an indie movie you know lower budget but we try it was a smaller crew i mean as they all are but like not only is a small crew but it's like a very familial crew like these are all people that i've handpicked that have worked with me on numerous things that i knew like would get it you know what i mean so it wasn't real manic and high energy and crazy so we tried to keep the energy level conducive to a lot of that you know and give them the time that they need and schedule it in such a way that they would have the time even though, like, again, I said, it's a, it's an indie movie. We had to shoot quickly, but we were smart about scheduling it in such a way that we had room to breathe. Everybody could take the time they needed to do what they needed to do and get comfortable in the moment because I knew how important that stuff would be. I mean, that's, you know, the, the entire movie pretty much. Uh, and I knew the people that I'm bringing to bear on it, you know, these are like, like I want them to be able to like really dig in and go for it. Right. So, uh, we made a point to rehearse as much as we could uh, and just, again, like just allow, allow time, you know, and allow uh, still enough stillness in the space that you can have on something like that. But we're also, we shot the whole thing at that motel out in Hempstead, Texas, which is kind of, it's not really the middle of nowhere. It's between here and, here and Austin, but it's very quiet, very serene. Like it kind of already just going there kind of puts you in that mindset mm -hmm. already. And everybody, uh, minus the Houston actors, uh, which a couple of them, everybody pretty much stayed out there. So it's like they had a lot of time to like live with one another. And I, th and I know that they ran this. I would come home every day because I just want to sleep in my own bed. But uh, I know they had a lot. Of, <laughs> I know they had a lot of time to uh, to work on it. And I know they I, I suspect that they worked on it a lot when I wasn't out there. Like we would you we would except for the overnights we did, we would usually wrap, you know, seven or eight p.m. because a lot of it in, indoors you can cheat it and uh so they would go out there's this nice like outdoor setting area and i know they would go out there with the pages and just start working on the next day so i you know i, I owe a lot to them too for being being willing and able to put in the work you know to get to be ready to get to that point the next day yeah i mean you know, sort of i guess we sort of covered it with you know nightmare on elm street being the uh the film that you know inspired you but you know what what is it that draws you to the darker side of cinema <sighs> I got problems. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean that that's, it's just, to me, that's the, that stuff is this. It, it's funny because, you know, growing up, people are a lot more accepting of it now because horror, I think generally is a lot more accepted because it's become on a broader scale, more mainstream, but growing up, you get a lot of crap about it and they think you're a serial killer or whatever, or they think they're not real movies, you know, but honestly, I'm like, well, did you sit down and really watch this? Because these movies sometimes dig into deeper stuff than what you would think would be, you know, like a dramatic movie that's trying to handle that, you know, like the, like Nightmare on Elm Street, for example, the way it handles a broken marriage, you know, like that I, I was, I remember as a kid getting that and my parents were going through it right at that time too. And it's speaking because they don't full out come out and say, Oh, well, you know, they're divorced. Uh, you know, Donald Thompson doesn't live here, but you get it. Like you figure out the way they interact. And um, so that's what I mean. It's like, it, even though you get that, 
you get that thrill of like the crazy stuff that's happening. The movies I tend to like, the darker films that I like are generally have that subtext. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Cronenberg stuff and Del Toro, you know, Janae, you know what I mean? Like stuff that there's always way more going on, you know? Uh, so th I think that's what really draws me to it because that's, to be totally honest, like that's kind of how I process stuff in my day-to-day -day life. Like whenever I, whenever I have to deal with something or, you know, have some sort of issue or an anxiety, when I'm thinking about how to deal with it, like even, even if it's wish fulfillment or like dark fantasy, like that's how my mind goes, you know, like, well, maybe I should, <laughs> you know, not necessarily go out and kill somebody, but it always goes to some dark, fantastic place. Right. And um, that's just how I'm wired, you know? So that's, I mean, I would, when I was a kid, when we would have to do reading assignments in elementary school, I would always read, do Stephen King stuff. I mean, a few of us did it. I wasn't a weird kid that way, but it, it you know, it was just, I think they were just happy that we were reading, but I mean, I've always been just, I didn't want to read Encyclopedia Brown or whatever else, you know what I mean? I'm like, no, I want to read it. I want to read the dark half, you know, and that's just, that's how I would lose myself. Um, comic books too, you know, just fantastic, like escapist stuff. Um, yeah. So that's just, that's just what I've always been drawn to. Yeah. I was the, uh, I was the weird Stephen King child. I started with the uh, the point horror books when I was like six or seven uh -huh, and yeah, I kind of yeah. got through them. And then I remember I was, I was nine or 10 and we, we moved to a house that had some fields and some woods at the back of us. And that uh -huh. was uh, the time when my mum went, here's Pet Cemetery. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't terrifying, you know, kids, you know, moving to a house with fields and woods at the back and yeah. Pet Cemetery um so yeah I was I was I was also that child yeah um I mean you know about now you know Fright Fest pass holders are you know planning out their, their weekend and what they're going to be watching over the over the course um what are they going to get if they pick mystery spot that they might not get from some of the other films that are on offer good question uh I would say uh and that's a really good question because I was looking at the lineup and I'm like, holy crap, this is pretty diverse. Like I wish so badly that I could go. Uh, but I think that what sets mystery spot apart is I I've said this a lot recently and I think it's, it's, it's a pretty funny comparison, but I think it works for me. I feel like a, a mystery spot is like Stephen King after the van accident. <laughs> like the later you know what I mean like where he was there was still that stuff there was still that fantastic stuff in the work but he just was at a much different place in his life you know and I feel and that's kind of where I'm at too and that's the stuff that those are the things that I gravitate to watching whereas um, there was a time where I would just love to watch high energy gory romps or whatever and I'm not I'm not denigrating that stuff at all I love it Dead Alive is one of my favorite movies but making it it's like I, I just don't I don't feel like I could do the do it the justice that it needs to be done that kind of but this is more what naturally comes out of me you know and I someone someone related to the project called it like a horror movie for adults and I, I don't want to say that because it's like that again that that seems kind of uh pejorative to other the other fi other films but like there's a there's a better way to say that but it is like the kind of I think it's the it's the kind of horror movie you would deal you would you, that would happen to you if you were a 44 year old adult, you know, yeah. whereas everybody always says it's the teenagers in peril or whatever. But yeah, this is this is the middle age horror <laughs> kind of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think like if so if you're into like stuff like uh, Bag of Bones or the, the Changeling, I guess I'll bring up again, you know, I, I would, I'd say this is probably your speed. Well, I wish you best of luck with the screening. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.